Hey, Mickey fell asleep reading Alice through the looking glass. Ironically, when he gets out of bed, he climbs through a mirror. Oh, malicious. Kids, don't try that at home. Weird things happen. For instance, you could walk in on a wizard who's been living behind your fireplace for all of those years, putting the finishing touches on a world for things that have been forgotten. Things that have been forgotten. A world full of passwords for various email and Facebook accounts. Anyway, as you would expect, the mischievous Mickey Mouse begins to tinker with the unknown. And really bad things happen as he is transported to the wasteland which he has helped to create and embarks on a magnificent adventure in Epic Mickey for the Nintendo Wii. When I first heard about this game, I thought it sounded epic gimmicky. Playing as Mickey Mouse fighting enemies with a paintbrush? Come on. But after spending five minutes with it, I immediately changed my tune and was sucked into the adventure. Because Epic Mickey is the perfect trifecta of video game design. It has a compelling plot, it's well made with high production value, and, most importantly, it has a creative control scheme that works well and makes the game fun to play. Because above all else, Epic Mickey is fun. <laughs> When used incorrectly, the Wii nunchuck and Wiimote controls can become gimmicky when controller waggling, pointing at the screen, and standard video game controls are all employed at once. Epic Mickey succeeds where so many other games have failed, as you control Mickey Mouse in these beautiful environments using the nunchuck's analog stick to move while the nunchuck shoots thinner and the right control shoots paint. In between levels, you've also got some of these beautifully stylized 2D platforming levels inspired by Mickey Mouse cartoons of the past. Sometimes in tight, confined spaces, it's difficult to see where Mickey is going when the camera is pulled back behind him. Hitting one of the buttons then allows you to see through Mickey Mouse's eyes in a first-person perspective. All of these tools and tricks and control mechanics have been used in other games, but in Epic Mickey they just come alive and enhance the incredible adventure because no matter how good an adventure is, if the controls are awful, nobody wants to play it. While Mickey Mouse is armed with a paintbrush, it's not that simple. He fires paint and thinner which affect enemies and objects on screen in different ways. If paint were time, this would be like Singularity with Mickey Mouse. Paint builds and thinner removes. When you fire thinner at enemies, it uh, hurts them, and paint will make them become your friends. Need to activate a gear? Give it a blast of paint. Need to remove something from a pipe? Shoot it with thinner, and so forth. The first level comes across as a bit of a dark, demented funhouse, but the game livens up quickly and has above-average visuals for the Nintendo Wii. This is one of those games that just gets it all right, and manages to move smoothly the entire time. There's no sluggish slowdown or jerkiness in Epic Mickey. As you can probably tell on screen, the levels are fairly sizable and pack a lot of things to do. There's treasures that you'll have to use some tricks and puzzle solving to unlock, and a variety of collectibles laying around everywhere. It's a combination puzzle-solving slash 3D platformer when you get down to it. More so than just a straight-up action game. As Mickey enters each environment, he's given objectives, and you as the player have to learn how to shape the environment to literally make it do what Mickey needs to do to move on to the next level while fighting off enemies and jumping from thing to thing with precision at the same time. If puzzle solving, action adventure, and well-made 3D platforming is your thing, you've got to give Epic Mickey a shot on the Nintendo Wii. I absolutely love seeing Mickey Mouse in his own games because uh, these days it seems like the Disney name is associated with crappy teen programming, but in reality, it should be associated with some of the best cartoons ever made. And Mickey Mouse is the king of cartoons. And if there's anyone that can make Mario and Sonic just step aside with the wink of an eye, 
It's Mickey Mouse. He commands that kind of respect, and this game is worthy of having his name. You've got to remember that Mickey can literally do anything. He could burn people with monsters and cut them in half if Disney would let him. In fact, he may have already done that in Fantasia, I'm not sure. 